Okay, this brings us now to questions uh, five through eight, and all of them look pretty short and, and doable, so um, I probably would just look them over and, and base my uh, chances of, of, of answering a question on whether or not I think I, I know it, uh, not just on uh, question length. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, question number five, and question number five, the answer to that one is B, and this is something that you really just have to have to know, and hopefully you'll get this information somewhere along the line that according to current research reading difficulties that are not the result of limited intelligence or lack of educational opportunity are most often caused by and it's B a deficit in phonological processing so what this means is that these folks who have designed this exam are really 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 concerned with what we call phonemic awareness and that's the awareness of sounds for example you have the letter, let's take the letter C for example. The letter C can represent not just one sound like its name, like C is for city. C can also represent a hard sound like cat. So the letters of course are important and they must be taught and they must be learned according to uh, the test maker's reasoning. But what's more important is really to be able to hear a s sound and to hear a k sound and then be able to associate those sounds that's a, a k, um, to those to map them onto the letter because anytime you see something between backslashes that's not a letter anymore this is s and this is k and so phonological processing is is seen to be more important in some regards than just being able to name letters you need both but if we had to put one horse in front of the other uh, then phonemic awareness would win by a nose and so A, you know, certainly could be correct, but it's not as correct as B. Poorly developed oral language abilities. Oral language means discussion. It means like a, a spoken vocabulary, and that's going to be more important for word meaning. Like if you sound out the word cat successfully, but you don't know what a cat is, and it's not part of your spoken vocabulary, you're not going to understand it. So that's C. It's, it's something else. Lack of motivation. Um, well... You know, let's just put an X through that, shall we? Okay, so that takes care of question uh, number five. Let's take a look at question number six and try to blow that up a little bit. Sorry if I didn't do that uh, earlier. Um, just trying to, just trying to help. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, so we have an extensive oral vocabulary is most likely to contribute to a reader's decoding skills by helping the reader. And then we've got a number of different options, and it happens to be in this case that D is correct. Let me circle that for you. Recognize a word after sounding it out. And so what's the story with that? Well, understand that we have two different types of, of vocabularies. We have like the spoken one. And then we also have our, our reading vocabulary. For example, in reading, you may see the word shall written out, I shall be leaving soon, and you read it and you understand it, but it's not part of your spoken vocabulary. I don't know how often you say shall. I hardly ever say it, maybe only when reading aloud, to be perfectly honest. So what's part of my spoken vocabulary uh, might be absent from my reading vocabulary and vice versa. So think about it for a moment. If a child's spoken vocabulary contains the word shall and they encounter it for the first time in print and they sound it out, they're going to know what it means because it's part of their oral language. If they sound something out, it's going to register and it will then become part of their reading vocabulary. Well, extensive oral language is maybe it's going to help relate an unfamiliar word to a known word with similar spellings, maybe, but it's not as correct as D is. The same with B, using syntactic cues to determine the meaning of an unfamiliar word. Syntactic cues really mean dealing with things like uh, grammar, for example. And just think of like two, two, and two. It's really the grammar of a sentence. Like if I said I went blank the store, I know I've got to insert a preposition, but that's not really an extensive oral vocabulary that's going to enable me to do that. That's my knowledge of grammar, of, of English syntax that will help with that. 
Okay, apply phonics generalizations to sound out a word. Mm, well, it's not as correct as D is. I already explained why D is correct. In this case, you really uh, sounding out is going to be related to phonemic awareness and letter sound and letter sound correspondence, not an oral vocabulary. So that's why D is correct uh, in that case. Okay, well let's go on to the next. And the next one, of course, if my math skills are any good, is number seven. Wonderful. Okay, it says, which of the following phonemic awareness skills is typically the easiest for children to acquire? Well, remember, phonemic awareness deals with sounds. And so if you think about sounds, and I already explained that earlier, where we want the child to be able to hear, for example, the k sound in the spoken word cat, What's going to be the easiest position for a child to be able to hear that k sound? Clearly in the initial part of the word. And so when we look down these uh, possibilities, A is correct because it's the easiest. Finding an initial sound is going to be the easiest one of all. It's certainly going to be easier than trying to compare a th sound to a p sound because you've got to hear some challenging sound that th might be challenging, for example, to distinguish it from p. Blending sounds together to form a spoken word. That too is gone because that's really a, a later uh, phonemic awareness skill. If you're curious, uh, blending is quite hard and then the exit criteria would be segmenting. Segmenting is the highest level of phonemic awareness where you're going to take a spoken word tag and then break it up into t, a, g and hearing all of the sounds contained within that word. So blending is pretty advanced. Segmenting, the reverse of blending really, is the most advanced. We're looking for the easiest, guys. That's gone then. Taking a look at D, identifying a word that does not belong in a group. Well, no way, because you've got to hear all kinds of sounds. It's too advanced. So the easiest thing to do is to start with the easiest position. That is the initial sound. That's why A is correct in that case. Okay, well, the next one in our way is eight and let's take a look and see what it says which of the following word identification strategies uh, typically is most advanced well out of all of these I think you can see that something like just pure decoding like sounding out based on phonics rules or generalizations or patterns like understanding that uh, a, a CVC pattern consonant vowel consonant pattern makes that vowel short like cat, for example. That's a short vowel right here. That's not very advanced. It's important, don't get me wrong, but it is not as advanced as some other things. Now using context clues is an advanced skill, but understand that the test maker doesn't look upon context very uh, graciously. They think it's an unreliable predictor of a word meaning. Sight words, sight words, remember, are things like the and was and saw, and certainly that's good, but it is not as advanced as analyzing word structure. That's why D is correct in this case. When they say analyzing a word structure, it's going to involve, like, let me just throw a word up here for you. D, nationalization. Denationalization. Denationalization has got a lot of syllables in it. You can count them off yourself. It also has prefixes like D and nation and all and eyes, ation, as you can see right in here. When you analyze the structures, then you know that nation's a noun. You know that AL, national, changes it to an adjective, for example. Eyes, for example, will change it to a verb. ATION is going to change it back to a noun. And then D is going to be a prefix that's going to change it to like undo, undoing nationalization. So they favor these types of very hands-on uh, skills as opposed to just context. So out of all of these options, the most advanced thing that you find is with analyzing word structure and that's why it is correct. Okay, fantastic. Let's move on and go to the next.